Hello YouTube, this is Bruce. A lot of you may or may not know me as Nebulax123. I've uh, corresponded with quite a few of you in the knife world, which is my area of interest. And I would like to um, start doing my own videos and see if I can add a little bit. Uh, love knives and I really hope that uh, I can I can add a little something that's maybe a little different, things we haven't seen before, knives you haven't seen before. And today, other than introducing myself, I've had um, about, oh I guess I've been collecting knives for close to 50 years now. I uh, work on knives, I restore knives, I uh, rehandle knives, I take apart um, folding knives and put them back together, put new handles on them, just whatever I feel like doing. Uh, make new knives and just really enjoy it better than any hobby I have. And today I thought to get us started with something you probably haven't seen before is we would cover the um, diamond blade knives which are made by the same company that makes knives of Alaska with Charles Allen. Um, here's uh, one that I've had for three or four years. You'll have to for forgive my 60 plus year old brain. Um, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, this has been a, a pretty much a daily user. Uh, you can see if you look at it, it's got scrapes, scraps, scratches. And uh, it really uh, it's just an amazing knife. Uh, the, the friction forging, which you may or may not have heard about, which is how the edges are made on these, is, is just really amazing to me. Uh, I've got practically every kind of knife you can think of, every steel you can think of. By far, the, uh, the diamond blade knives hold an edge better and get sharper than anything I know of and I'm going to try to explain that a little bit. We'll do a little bit of cutting with these and just see how they, they hold up. This this particular one is actually the one we'll focus on today and I'll probably do videos on these other ones as I can. Uh, quick background on the diamond blade knives. It's a, a process called friction forging. What they do is on the edge of the knife, this is, this is set in a and a uh, jig and then a round steel rounded bottom tool is um, placed up against this and it's rotated at high speed and a lot of pressure and it stirs the, uh, the metal as they call it. It does it to such an extent that it actually breaks down the steel um, I think that on regular D2, which is what all of these are, are made of, that's what they've found so far that works the best. They are working on and experimenting with other steels. Uh, in regular D2, this um, edge, or, or excuse me, the, um, the micron size on, on the steel will run between 5 and, and 15 microns on a, on a finished edge. On the diamond blade knives that is now down to 0 0.5 microns that's really small I've looked at some micrographs of, of the edge of these knives and they just disappear uh, it, it's it, the, the edge under the micrograph is, is just smooth you can um, you know, it's just almost homogenous. You don't really see a lot of grain structure. And um, because of that small size, it, it does a couple things. Number one, it makes the uh, edge um, extremely hard. Uh, these rock well between 65 and, and 68. Um, 66, 65 being the average, I've seen them up to 67. And the other thing it does, it seems to trap the chromium carbides in the, um, the edge area and it's just totally stainless. Uh, I've seen one of these at the blade show dumped in salt water. 
uh, as a demonstration, and they had it in there for quite a few days prior to the show. The soft D2 back here, you know, had a little bit of pitting and corrosion. Actually, I was surprised, not as much as I would think. And um, there was nothing on the uh, part down here that had been friction forged. It's just totally stainless. Um, so you won't have any edge degradation just from, from sitting around. It's, it's just not going to happen. Because of the very small size, this is also an extremely tough edge. Uh, this particular knife right here is one that I, I got from Charles Allen at the Blade Show. And when I got it, it didn't look like this. It was actually bent over uh, about to here. And um, they'd used it as a demonstration knife. And uh, I brought it home with the intention of straightening it, bringing it back, and wherever it broke, I would then take the two halves and make another knife. Well, it didn't break. Uh, I managed to straighten it all the way back out. <clears throat> the edge didn't crack. Um, it, it is just so so tough, and I, I'm putting that up to the very small grain structure of the D2. Even at that hardness, there's there's no cracking, no nothing. So uh, I don't think that that toughness or uh, certainly wear resistance is an issue. And um, I'm I'm trying to hurry a little bit. I, I shot one of these earlier and it, and it went over. So um, I'm trying to get in all the good stuff, the the cutting and and trying to get the main points in here. Um, speaking of that, let's let's try a little cutting with this. And we'll start with uh, one of my favorite things to cut up, which is my losing lottery tickets. I have, I have lots of these. I don't seem to ever run out. And um, as you can see, it's just effortless. Um, not only can you cut S-curves, but you can cut circles, uh, pretty much anything you want, without any problem. Uh, one of the mediums that I like to test an edge on is a paper towel and the reason I do is because they're so loosely woven um, there's not a real tight fine structure like a regular piece of paper so if you can cut these and get a really nice clean edge along here you know you've got a pretty sharp knife and I don't know if you can see that or not um, but it's just there's nothing here it, it's just totally smooth um, no fuzz, nothing like that. It, uh, seriously sharp. Uh, I thought we would take a piece, I just happen to have this in the basement. This is a piece of uh, three quarter by three quarter pine like you might use on trim. And um, I thought we would just see how many cuts on each side it takes to go through it. And um, as we do more and more knives, as I make more videos, we can kind of use that as a as a standard. So we'll uh, take some cuts here and, and just see what it takes. Uh, one, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. Um, I guess I shouldn't be with this steel, but that was um, a pretty quick cut. It's smooth as glass, and um, as you can see. It's not hard to, um, I hope you can see that, to cut out V-notches or anything else you'd want to do with it. It's um, just amazing stuff. Uh, wow. I like that. Uh, this is, as I said, one that I've made. Uh, these particular hand. I, I didn't make the knife. I made, put the handles on it. Those particular handles are... Uh, leopard wood and, and I actually plan on using this as a um, hunting knife just whatever comes along this one as I said I've used for close to three to four years with no problems I've sharpened it twice and um, there, there just doesn't seem to be you know it's even though the friction forging, it's going to be hard to see, but if you look where the edge of my thumb is, it only goes up about that far, so a lot of people might say, well, I don't know, you know, I might sharpen it away. Well, I've sharpened this knife twice in three or four years. 
I don't think I'll wear this out. I don't think my children will wear this out. So I just don't think that that's a problem. And um, as I, I get better on YouTube, I'll try to do more in-depth videos. This one was just more to introduce myself and try the camera. And I, I hope that you guys will enjoy it. And I hope you'll enjoy some of the future videos that I have. And I hope you'll tell me the things I'm doing right, the things I'm doing wrong. And we'll just um, try, try to make it entertaining for you. And I thank you much.